Today's Ringer NBA show is brought to you by BetQL. Want an edge over Vegas? Download BetQL, the app you need to get an advantage this season. Discover value bets, line movement, and find out what bets the public backs with BetQL. The best part, BetQL is free to download from your mobile device. Head to BetQL.co and use promo code NBA for your three-day trial. Give yourself an advantage over Vegas and download BetQL. That's BetQL.co and promo code NBA. And now, you check. Welcome to the Heat Check Podcast. I'm your host, John Gonzalez, joined as I am every week by our producer, Isaac Lee. Isaac, basketball is back. It's tomorrow. It's happening. Tuesday, basketball begins. And to set you up, we've got NBA Palooza all day long on the ringer.com. We're going to have tons of videos from 10 to 11 o'clock Pacific time. See, back in the day, Isaac, when I lived on the East Coast, if I had heard Uh somebody say Pacific time, that would have really pissed me off because like (laughs) East Coast time is supposed to be like the standard American time, What do you right? mean it's supposed to be the standard American time? I mean, that's basically like when you look at TV listings and shit, they How basically elitist. list it. I'm with you, and now I'm not having it. I'm going to tell you, we're here in LA. Yes. We're going to give LA times. Yeah. So uh, from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., we're going to do an NBA fantasy draft live. At 11.45 a.m. Pacific, we're going to have a live sources say. At 2 p.m. Pacific, we're going to have a live One Shining podcast. And then from 4 to 5 p.m. Pacific, we're going to do an NBA wins pool with a ton of your favorite ringer talent. Simmons is going to be involved. House, Concepcion, Shea is going to be on. I'm going to be on it. It's going to be a lot of fun. And then that will lead us right into the kickoff of the NBA season. Sixers and Celtics, we're going to have a live watch party, gang. So stay with us all day long. You don't want to miss that. You also don't want to miss the really fun NBA-related content that we have on The Ringer. We're wrapping up our best-case, worst-case scenarios for all 30 teams. I wrote about number five, the Philadelphia 76ers, number four, the Raptors from KOC. KOC also has a story about NBA storylines that you want to check out. Number three on our best case, worst case, the Rockets. Varier did that one. Dan Devine, new staff writer, Dan Devine, shouts to Dan, did an NBA variant story about the wide range of outcomes for a certain handful of NBA teams. And Haley O'Shaughnessy wrote an awesome profile, must read, of Hassan Whiteside. Haley is going to join us later on in the program, along with Paolo Ugetti, to preview the Western Conference. Then Kevin Clark and Riley McAtee will join us for a very special segment (laughs) that Isaac will also be involved in. I don't want to give it away too much, but those three people represent our sort of avatars for fan bases that have been historically wanting. So we'll get into those. Historically. Historically. I want to emphasize that part. Wanting. We'll get to that a little bit later in the program. But first, of course, the Jimmy Butler saga drags on and we want to preview the Eastern Conference as well. And for that, we need a big guest. Boom shakalaka. He's heating up. All right, joining me in the studio, one of our favorite repeat offenders from Binge Mode and NBA Desktop is back. Here we come. He has so many ideas. He doesn't care who steals them on the internet. That's true. It's Jason Concepcion. That's a callback that only a few of us will get. Only a few of us. Uh, (laughs) Thank you for having me. The NBA season is officially upon us. We kick it off tomorrow night with NBA Palooza. Can't wait. Still unresolved. This is obligatory now. We're contractually Mm -hmm. obligated to discuss this topic until it is resolved. It is not resolved yet, so we will discuss Jimmy Butler. Uh, Sham Sharnia reported that he is set to play in the opener against the Spurs on Wednesday. He says that the talks are dead with the heat for now. Jimmy practiced on Sunday. Glenn Taylor, the owner, was at practice, which is reportedly a rare occurrence. Where are you on Jimmy Butler drama? I love it. For the content, mm-hmm. yeah, it's, it's good a, content. It's, it's obviously just an incredible mess. I don't quite understand why they haven't told him. Listen, just stay away from the team while we work out <laughs> deals away from us, and don't harangue our young players who we in, have invested much yeah. money in and we have high hopes for. Please don't destroy their confidence yeah. by wrecking them with third stringers. So yeah, I don't understand that part of it, but I guess. Obviously, they're concerned about getting off to a slow start. Maybe the kids getting booed. They looked absolutely lackadaisical against the Bucks in yeah. the preseason game last week where they just got freaking waxed. It is an incredible mess. Wiggins being like, let me get the exact quote. I have it here. This is by John Krasinski. The Athletic. From The Athletic. 
quoted Andrew Wiggins saying, all I know is when we start playing the real games, Jimmy is someone you want on your team. Andrew, <laughs> blink twice if you're okay. I feel like blink he's going to hold up a newspaper <laughs> at any moment. Uh, Chris Ryan put in our Slack that it was serious Stockholm Syndrome. I agree. It's crazy. Like, that's one of my favorite parts. The Wiggins turn around because he's like, okay. Also, yes. one of my favorite parts is Jimmy Butler screaming at whatever executive to go get him a salad with balsamic vinaigrette. Like during a game, I'm like, I'm like that's a good salad dressing choice. I like balsamic. It's kind of crazy. It's aggressive though. Yeah, um, I, I just don't understand this. I also love Chris Ryan's take from last week where he said, should just be like, hey, trade me. I'm not calling for that, but I'm saying like, I would not be surprised if Cat was like, this team doesn't have my back. Right. No one's out here defending me. Like we're going with this 29 year old guy with a ton of miles on his legs who is oft injured. Why is no one defending me? Why does no one have my back? Just trade me. Get me out of here. It's a crazy, crazy situation. Minnesota Timberwolves, esteemed statesman Kevin Garnett weighed into the athletic and said, I think Jimmy thinks his worth is a little bit more than what it is. He is a very good player, but I don't see him on the same level as KD and LeBron. Uh, but if they are a plus, he's definitely an AA minus. I don't know if he had the power to come out and force a trade like this. Yeah, no shit. He didn't have a, a, the power to force a trade. He's still stuck there. For me... I want all of this. Yeah, uh, I mentioned great. this on the pod last week, and Chris was like, I don't want any of it. I want all of it. I want him to stay there this season. I want them to play through this, and I want to see what happens, because it's going to, if that happens, think about the entertainment value He's for us. Start. He's going <laughs> to start. He's going to play. On Wednesday. What? <laughs> I, he's going to play? Yeah. I don't get it. I want to see. very strange, but I am enjoying it. Thoroughly. I want to see all the drama. I want to see between the players what's yes. happening with them. I want to see what's happening between the front office and the owner. I want to see how Tibbs manages this the whole thing. Oh, man, Tibbs. The longer this goes, his head might explode. I love it so much. I feel like we should say, in terms of uh, Jimmy's statement that you can't win without me, the numbers bear it out. That's right. With him on the floor, they were putting up elite team per possession stats. Dan Devine had a, had a piece today where... Uh, shouts to the new ringer staffer, new Dan Devine. ringer staffer, the great Dan Devine, quoting Cleaning the Glass, who showed that when Butler was on the floor, the Timberwolves posted a plus 8.7 per 100 possessions number, which is an elite level number yeah. if you project that out. And then, you know, when he went down, their defense and their season indeed kind of went off a cliff. So he's right in that regard. But Carl Anthony Towns has a chance to be one of the greatest big men ever. And <laughs> I don't think it's that great to have Jimmy Butler just haranguing him <laughs> mercilessly. Why? It also feels like what else Amazing. happened? There's something else that we don't understand that we don't know about for this to explode like this. Here's my very simple question. Yeah. You're a Knicks fan. Mm -hmm. Would you want Jimmy Butler? No. You don't want Jimmy Butler on your team? No, I don't want him screaming at Chris Stapps Porzingis and Frank Nilakina and Mitchell Robinson. The only team that should be looking for him is a team looking to really make some hay now. To go to a conference finals, go to a finals. Yeah. To really make some Push noise. them over the top. Everything else aside, I love his competitiveness. It's just like the age where he is in his career does not match where the Knicks are in their evolution as a franchise right now. It would just be bad. And- who knows what they'd have to give up to get him. So, no. Everything you're saying, I think, makes sense. And I think the heel turn that Jimmy Butler has really, like, leaned into here, I think that it it fuels him. In fact, I, like, I, I think I, it does. No, in fact, he told the AP that it does. He said, sure, boo me. It's not going to change the way I play. It's probably going to make me smile more. Please do it. I, I think he's really enjoying wearing the black hat. Yeah. And I'm here for it. I'm here for all of it. What about the, What about your Sixers? Uh, in a vacuum, yes. Now, is Markel Fultz on that team? I worry about that then in that scenario. But if it's you're putting him with uh, Ben Simmons, who I think would be able to handle it just fine, and Joel Embiid, who would just bark back at him, mm -hmm. yeah, let's let's do that. I'm on board with that. But uh, it doesn't look like Jimmy Butler's going anywhere soon, so we'll keep monitoring yeah. that situation. The NBA season is starting on Tuesday. We're going to have all kinds of stuff, so we're going to break down both conferences. We did the Jimmy Butler talk about it. We're going to shift to the Eastern Conference because we're both from the East. You lived in New York. I'm yes. from Philadelphia. We talked about your Knicks. I don't have them in my playoff picture. I, a little preview for you. But we're going to go through our, our top eight playoff teams and just sort of break down the conference. Sure. Who do you have at number one in the conference? Now— I think the Celtics are certainly the consensus number one pick. They're going to have Gordon back. Team has another year to gel. They were obviously an, an elite team. Brad Stevens, listen, working here at the ring, you know, if I never hear Brad Stevens' name again, it will be too soon. <laughs> They're going to be very good, but, but I'm going to zig when everyone's zagging. I like this. 
I'm going to pick the Raptors. It's a fine pick. It's a perfectly fine pick. I would not be surprised if the Raptors won 60 games. I would not be surprised if they won like 53 games. There's a lot of question marks here, but but if Kawhi Leonard is healthy mm. and he's like, I want to show people that I'm still that guy and I want to, I'm going to kill people out here. That team has so much depth yeah. and perimeter defense. I really like them. The throw-in of Danny Green is like one of those kind of underrated moves that basketball nerds are like, wow, they also got Danny Green? On top of it, On yeah. top of, so I'm going to go with the Raptors as my number one. What about I, you? I like that pick. Look, they upgraded from DeMar DeRozan, turned him into Kawhi Leonard. It's, it's the same good. team, but better. And we, I think it's easy for us to forget although the Raptors fans don't like us to forget, so they get at us to remind us that they had the second best record in the NBA last right. year. And if not for running into the brick wall, LeBron James, Tough. every postseason, who knows what would have happened now? LeBron James in Los Angeles with us. Right. The East is open. And, that you know, the Raptors' big weakness last year was they struggled against elite teams, against top 10 teams. Right. You have to think that Kawhi Leonard changes that. You put him on the point of attack on whoever star you're playing against and let the rest of the team pick up the slack defensively. It's got Siakam, Fred Van Vliet, Kyle Lowry. Like Kyle Lowry's still out there. Still out there. They just have so much perimeter defense. I'm going with the Raptors. I like it. R1 and 2 are inverted. I've got okay. them too. The one is the Boston Celtics. I hate to do this. It makes and me— We all do. <laughs> like, look, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the Boston Celtics, and I know it drives people from Philly crazy when I say this, but it's true. It's the truth. You look at their team, and objectively, on paper, they are the deepest team in the conference. Yeah. They have just a ton of talent, and on top of that, as you mentioned, they've got Brad Stevens, who we all know is a very good head coach. Very it good. sickens me that He's they great. were that good last year without Kyrie and Gordon Hayward, Terrible and now you're adding fans. in Gordon Hayward and Kyrie Irving, yep. and it's on paper they should be the best team in the conference, but I don't think the Raptors are that far behind them, and I don't think my number three team, the Philadelphia 76ers, oh, are I, that far behind we them. We agree there. I have you got the, them three. I have the Sixers three as well. I think there are some question marks with the Sixers also. Fultz, obviously, chief among them. Is that a big question mark? <laughs> we don't know what's going to happen so. with Markel. They're um, going to start him, apparently. The I, plan, according to Brett Brown, is to start Markel Fultz to begin games and then to start JJ in the second half. Incredibly strange. There are some question marks there, obviously. So it's Fultz, number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, Ben Simmons' jump shot, the status of it, yeah. the existence of it, actually. Right. Teams, they're just going to sell out, really, to stop him from penetrating, knowing that he's not going to shoot. Does that change anything? But you have to imagine another year, another year better. I'm going to go with the Sixers and three. Yeah, I like this. All right, number four, who do you have it for? The Bucs. I'm gonna go we're, we're in lockstep here. I, I also have the box. I think there's a pretty clear delineation between the top four teams in the, in the conference. And like, we'll talk about the five team in a second because I know that they're going to have like a little uh, inferiority complex about being left out of That's that fine. like conversation. But yeah, I mean, they've got Giannis. And I think like you look at those four teams and especially now with Bud and they're going to space the floor. And Chris, That's the thing. Chris Middleton does not get enough credit. Yes. He's a way underrated player. They bring in Brooke Lopez. I think they could squeeze some minutes out of him. Eric Bledsoe, look. He's shooting threes too. He's a perfectly fine point guard. Yes. I like this team. I do as well. You mentioned Coach Bud's influence on the team. Last season, the Bucks ranked 28th in percentage of points from threes. 24.7% of their points came from three-pointers. You're throwing a lot of numbers at me today. Very statty. I like I'm this. Very, I've been, you know, listen, I've, I can't wait for the league You're to very start. I can't about wait this. for it to start up. 25th in, in overall three-point attempts, 24 a game. In the preseason under Coach Bud, 33% of their points came from threes. They took 40 a game. Now, they're not going to take 40 a game in the regular they're season. They're not going to do that. That's not going to happen considering that only the Rockets right, have the taken Rockets. 40 or more ever, and they've done it twice, and they're the only ones that have ever done it. That's not going to continue. But that upward trend is extremely positive for this team. And even and Giannis essentially doubled his three-point production in the preseason over last season. So even if he's not making... The spacing that will generate against, especially in the regular season when it's like teams are not gaming specifically for the Bucks game in, game out. Right. It's just going to create a lot of space for him to operate. And like he's a guy that takes two steps and 
He's time there. shifts into another decade. Like, <laughs> so I'm really excited for that. I'm really, really, really excited to watch the Bucks. KOC also Super very excited. excited to watch the Bucks. He wrote a fantastic piece on the ringer.com yeah. about Giannis and how bullish he is about Giannis being in Bud's system and all the things that it's going to open up for him. As Jason just mentioned, we encourage you to read that piece. My question for you, because I didn't get to ask KOC this because mm-hmm. I haven't seen him yet, but I will soon when we do Palooza. But I'll ask you, like I could see in the same way that we had Raps and Celtics 1-1A one and one A and the Sixers right in that mix, too. I could see any of those three teams winning the conference provided the things break right for them. How right would things have to break for the Bucks to win the conference? Could you see a war? Is there a scenario uh, where they win the conference they go to the finals? Or is that a, a step too far for you? Win the conference is tough. I could see them getting fighting their way to the finals in the playoffs. I mean, they gave the Celtics everything they could handle. Mm-hmm. I think what would be required is someone really unexpected breaking out and their three pointers really landing at a good rate, like say 38 to 40 to 42% or something like that. Like if they take a ton of threes and that really works for them, they're one of these high variance teams where I could see them rising. It's just a stretch for me to think that they could win the conference. I'm in agreement with you on that. I I think it would be like Giannis would really have to go supernova in that scenario. Then all of a sudden we're talking about MVP Giannis, right? I mean, like if they're conference finalists, then I I think then he's 1000% in that conversation. I mean, if he's taking like three and change threes a game and converting them at a good rate, he's the MVP. I'm not there on on that yet. I don't think that happens. Giannis three pointers are like, it's still hard for me to, he's taking them in the preseason. It's hard for me to wrap my head around. Team number five for you in the Eastern Conference. Team number five, the Indiana Pacers. I also have the Pacers wow, at five. Wow, look at this, John. And this was not planned. We no, did not, not talk about not this. So those top four teams I like quite a bit. And then I look at the Pacers and go, mm-hmm. they're just solid. They're solid. They're going to be good. They're going to uh, be good. Isaac Lee took them in our uh, league pass draft. He likes them quite a bit. He says they're going to be a good basketball team. Hey, I, defense is fun. Well, I, I don't know that <laughs> I would describe the Indiana Pacers as fun per se. They're going to be excellent. Excellence is fun. They are, are they excellent? Excellent is a little strong. I would say good. Very, They're very good. good. Yeah. Very, They're very fine. Good. This is the right way to describe the Indiana Pacers. On any given night, they could beat any team in the league. Yes. They're going to be right in that playoff mix. They're going to give some teams some trouble. I agree. And then I go, good job. What would have to happen for them to be better than good is Miles Turner is going to have to bounce back from what was mildly a stalled season last year after much promise the previous season. You'd like to see him bounce back. Now, teams are going to have another, they're going to be looking for Oladipo this year. They're going to be looking to stop him. You have to imagine they're going to do everything to just say, okay, Victor Oladipo, let's see if your supporting cast can pick up the slack here. That's why I have them here because it's essentially Oladipo and then you're waiting for someone else to step into the fold. I am generally pretty dubious of off-season Instagram workout updates. Are we talking about Miles Turner? Looks great. So this Looks like you, John. We're- <laughs> Well, John turn- got you get this is a podcast, people can't see it. Gons is jacked is for some John has become jacked over the last month. It's apocryphal. He's <laughs> he's he's trading in lies to, I don't know, derail this podcast. But I'm generally I am generally I am generally <laughs> dubious of the guys who come back from the offseason in any sport yeah. and declare themselves to be in career best shape. Yeah. However, Miles Turner is looking great. pretty good. Demonis Sabonis looking pretty good. Oladipo did it last year. Yeah. So all of a sudden, Indiana Pacers might be the fittest team in the league. I'm, yeah, I mean, I, I, a very professional basketball team in I, Indiana. That's a great way to put it. They're just no drama. They play. They just get after Nice them. players. It's perfect for Indiana, yes, right? It's, it's like the perfect Indiana. Indiana ethos. Yeah. All right. I think six, seven, and eight is where we might start having sure. some deviation here because I looked at the Eastern Conference and I went, do we have to have eight playoff teams? Because it really falls off a cliff after this. Yeah. Where are you at six? At number six, I have your Washington Wizards. The Washington Wizards. Joe House. Shouts I mean, to House. You know, they're the Wizards. They've been the Wizards they're for some time Wizards. now. They've added Dwight Howard and his strained <laughs> ass muscle. <laughs> Which, it was, a, so when that came out, I, I swear to you, I raced to Slack to make the, he's a pain in the ass, yeah. and now he has one joke, and you and like 12 other staffers had beaten me to it. It's fucking great. It was amazing. They also have Austin Rivers. On this team now. Austin Rivers out here just saying stuff. Saying, Doing stuff, hey, saying man, stuff. People sleeping on the Wizards. We can be uh, the top team in these. It's like, Austin, please calm down, my friend. 
Can we bring up one more, like, out-of-control Washington Wizards quote? <laughs> Please. Bradley Beal to the Athletic. Oh, I love this On one. Jeff Green. I love this. This is, a, this is a thing that he said out loud on the record, and it was, Jeff is a star man because he's built like LeBron and almost plays like him. Almost. I, almost is doing a lot of work in that sentence. <laughs> I just want to... Almost is doing a phenomenal amount of So work. much lifting. So much lifting in that sentence. He's That's like lot. LeBron, man. Look, so KOC is frequently maligning John Wall. He thinks he's the least elite of the elite point guards out there and has disparaged him to no end. I like John Wall just fine. I like John I like John Wall. John well. Wall, however, and I think we've talked about this on six straight heat checks running. Let's make it seven. John Wall has gone sort of the opposite way of Miles Turner. John Wall did not get, in, it appears, in career best shape. Came back looking a little bit thicker, looking like he could play potentially <laughs> tight end. And flat out said, he was asked by the media about like going out and partying too much. And he was like, yo, man, I'm I'll an adult. I'll do what I I'll want. I'll do what I want. And I'm like... Iconic. Fucking give me the wizards, man. They are they are Timberwolves East in terms of drama. I love that. Also, I'll just say, Thick Players is a movement right now. It's not just a couple guys. They're back in business. John Wall. Yeah. Partying. Doesn't care. Doesn't give a shit. I love it. <laughs> me uh, too. Luka Doncic. Listen, he's give not- Give me more cheese on the nachos. He's not dad bod age. But he's premature dad bod. He's already in it. It looks like he just came out of the garage, like working on his Camaro. He's going to be doing a Levi's commercial with Brett Favre within the next couple of months. Nikola Jokic, I don't think has ever worked out. Ray Felton's still alive. Ray Felton is still here. Deion Waiters is back Deion and better Waiters, than ever. This is great. We should have, we'll do this on I Heat Check. It. Well, we'll do a rankings of guys, these it's guys. it's a movement right now. It's fantastic. I have the Wizards at seven. My sixth team is the Heat. I mess with that a little bit. I think they're, pretty much in that same I pocket have, I there. I have that flipped. Yeah. I think they're in that same tier. The Heat, another professional basketball organization. Same. They play hard. They, they have a system. Everybody knows what the system is. Yeah. Dragic is out there still functional point yes. guard. And I like Josh Richardson. I think he's underrated. That would have been a nice piece for Minnesota had they pulled off the, the Jimmy Butler trade. They're professional. And Whiteside, obviously, is the X Factor. He is the X Factor. Check out a great piece. Excellent. On Hassan Whiteside by... Haley O'Shaughnessy. great Haley O'Shaughnessy on TheRinger.com. We're big fans of that site and of Haley O'Shaughnessy. A great website. Agree. Last team for you. Who do you have just squeezing into the Eastern Conference playoffs? I picked the Pistons mainly because I can't pick the Nets. The Pistons, you just have too much talent to not make the playoffs. Like, it would just really be disastrous for them to not make the playoffs with Blake Griffin on that roster. The East, especially the, as we stated, the bottom half of the playoff picture is pretty shaky. I'm going to go with the Pistons. I also had the Pistons. We had the exact same eight teams, just in slightly different order. The Pistons, for me, was a combination of, yes, they have some talent, They've got a new coach now, but it was kind of like by coach default. Bump. Yeah, yeah it's but it, was, it is. It is mildly by. It was kind of That's by default because I went. Well, I like for a half a second, I was like, could the Cavs still make it? No, no. the Hornets. Um, no, it's not going to be the Knicks. Bless your heart. We'll talk about them They're real not, quick before we I go. Hope it's not the Knicks. Bulls, Magic, and Hawks. Absolutely not. And that it really, like you said, kind of leaves the Nets. And then I'm like, I'm not in I on the Nets either. Yeah. I guess it has to be the pit because you have. I checked. You got to have eight teams. You got to have eight. And Blake Griffin, listen. Still living in Detroit. Still living in Detroit and is a very good basketball player. When healthy. When healthy. <laughs> so Caveat. crossing my fingers for him. Real quick before we go, how do we feel about the Knicks? You have, As you just stated, mm. you don't want them to be winning things. We're not sure when Chris Tapps Porzingis, your large adult son, will be back. If That's he'll right. be back at all because there's a world in which they go, hey, maybe we want to redshirt him this year, increase our draft pick status. Charks. Wrote a very interesting piece on yes. the ringer.com, on said ringer.com, about KD to the Knicks, pre agency alive and well. And I would want that for entertainment purposes, for content purposes. Charks makes the case on basketball. Yeah. Saying that it makes sense from a basketball perspective. It really does. Listen, how does Kevin Durant not make sense from a basketball perspective for, for any, any team? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am hopeful. I'm not getting my hopes up too high, at least not out in public, deep inside my psyche. I'm quite excited. The kind of chatter that you hear from the sources that are chattering calls to mind LeBron to Los Angeles mm. and the chatter that preceded that move. So, I mean, it feels very possible. I hope it happens. As for the Knicks this season, it's all about development. Just develop the young players. Don't 
make any dumb moves such as stretching Joachim Noah's contract over multiple seasons for some reason, <laughs> affecting your cap picture when you don't know what your cap needs are going to be going forward. Don't do anything. Oh, did they do that? They did that. Okay, don't do it again. Don't do anything like that again. Just develop these young guys and, you know, don't be afraid to tank if you need to. Don't be afraid to tank. I like all of this. I'm here for tanking Knicks. I love when the Knicks are really bad. But if it's in the service of, I mean, as a Philadelphian, that's just like, uh, yeah. it has to happen. But in the service of potentially setting them up to reboot the franchise. Let's and reboot also, it. I like also, not just when the Knicks are really bad, but when the Knicks are really good, it's also fun in the same way that when the Celtics and the Sixers are really good and the it's Eastern fun. Conference is alive again. Give me that. I 100% agree. Give me that. So me we want that rivalries. to happen. Let's Give me go. some rivalries. Let's reboot the Eastern Conference. Jason Concepcion, binge mode is out here. NBA desktop is That's back. Right. We are super we'll excited for that. Uh, he'll be all over NBA Palooza on Tuesday. Jason, you are the best. Thank you for doing this. Thank you. All right, that was Jason. Jason was killing it. And uh, now we're going to bring in two more killers, Paolo and Haley. All right, joining me in the studio, two of our favorites here at the Heat Check Podcast. I say that about everybody. This time, I actually really mean it. Two double staff writers, Haley O'Shaughnessy, Paolo Ugetti. How oh, things, guys? What's twins. up? Why twins? I'm ready for you guys basketball. are here. Uh, very excited about this. We did the Eastern Conference uh, with Jason Concepcion. It was very excited. And now we're going to do the Western Conference. You had and- the opening act. And now you have. And now, now this is, the, we had the appetizer. Now it's the main course, the Western Conference. Uh, let's, so the way we, do, we did it with Jason is we started from one, we'll go to eight, and we'll just run around and we'll see what we have different and we'll make a case for why we put them in that order. I have a hard time believing that you did anything other than what I did for number one, but we'll start with Haley. Okay. Warriors. Warriors. You're also the Warriors. Yeah. So we can all agree on that. Boring. This is very boring. It's anticlimactic in the extreme. I am well past the point of being excited about the Warriors. Danny and I had a conversation about this last year when I was at the playoffs, when I was writing about how they've made being really good boring. (laughs) And he took umbrage with that. He still thinks that their style is beautiful and aesthetically pleasing. I think it can be, but I've gotten to the point where like you just know they're going to be good and that sucks a lot of the entertainment out of it Well, they're not boring because of how they play, he's correct. Like, the, how they play is really the beautiful. Result, right. You get to see Steph Curry do crazy things and Kevin Ray do crazy things. But it's boring because we know that at the end of the game, they're going to win. I have a sliver of hope that they're going to be a little more exciting this year because of their motivation in terms of how they incorporate Boogie into the equation, but also hoping that Steph takes on a bigger role. Because I think that's what makes them a little more fun to me is that when Steph has more of a a rule in the offense, and by that I mean like just checking up threes, which since Duran arrived, that's been mitigated a bit. Yeah. So I'm hoping that they're a little more fun in terms of they give more to stuff to do. I've been thinking about in all the preview stuff, of course the Warriors are going to be first. Right. Anyone who says otherwise mm-hmm. is attention I mean, takes, favorite you know? to win the title too. But I also have been thinking about, like we, I think everyone just forgot that Steph was like injured multiple times last right. year. And that stuff just doesn't go away because you get older. If anything, it like yeah. happens more often. Yeah, getting so. old sucks. I'm, I'm here to tell you, like the older you get, it's it's much harder. Uh, and they're professional athletes. That's the thing that people always bring up with the Warriors where they go, oh, well, you know, they're one injury away from like making things interesting. I'm like, are they? They they're At some point this season, if they get boogie back, they're going to start five all-stars. And if you take one all-star off, that's still four all-stars. Yep. And if you take two all-stars off, that's still three all-stars. I'm doing the math on the fly here, gang. I think it's pretty <laughs> fucking impressive. That's a lot of all-stars. So like, I don't know, the, the redundancy of talent there still makes it that I think that it's, um, you know, like we're barreling towards yet another Warriors title. And like Jason and I just had a conversation about this. I'm all the way here for KD to the next or anywhere that's not Golden State so that we could just unplug one of the pieces of the super team and have a little bit of hope going into a season that it's not a foregone conclusion. Well, but I mean, even if he doesn't end up leaving somewhere else, like the way that the Clay and Draymond, like them resigning is going to be tricky. Yeah. Because they're both going to be bananas. Yes. And they're both going to want bigger contracts because they're like, okay, we get it. We've been the third and fourth fiddle, but we've also won how many championships? I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense for Durant to go anywhere because they could literally become one of the best teams of all time, like a dynasty. But the fact that there's rumors and rumblings that New York seems like a, destination he's interested in like 
thank God for us, right? Like, I mean, that, that'll make the East more interesting. That'll make the West more interesting. So I'm, I'm make the ringer.com yeah, more ringer. interesting. Yeah. I'm We're all here for, for that. it. It works I'm, all the way I'm around all for that. All right. That's enough for warriors talk. I'm already tired of them. Uh, number two in the Western conference, pal, you go first. This time. I have the rockets. I, I couldn't not, I really, really thought hard. I was ready to come in here and, and just blow it just up, just blow it up and put the thunder at number two. If they would have been healthy, but they're not healthy. You have obviously Westbrook probably won't start the season. Andre Roberson mm -hmm. needs to be reevaluated re in January. Yeah, in January. So I was so in on this year's Thunder, and I still am to an extent, just not to the extent where I would be comfortable putting them at number two. And with the Rockets, I mean, they did lose Trevor Ariza and Luke Mambute, but I think you have your top two players coming back. There's no reason to doubt them a little bit. Right. I have the Rockets too. And even though they did lose um, Ariza and Luke Mambute, what worked is still there. They still have Chris Paul. They still have James Harden. They still have Clint Capella underneath. And all of the like pieces mm -hmm. that they have to back it up are still there too. The Eric interesting Gordon. part will be Melo, right? Like, uh, how does he fit in? Does yes. he hurt them as much as he hurt OKC? <laughs> is he going to that... come off the bench? Is he yes. is he going to not take as many mid-range shots? What are you going to get out of him, if anything, defensively, generally, that's a, the answer is nothing? Melo's going to come off the bench. There's literally no doubt in my mind because it's not what's best for the team for him to start. And I do not think that Mike D'Antoni is going to let this guy make a decision that's best for him. After everything that happened with the Knicks, he's like, actually, I'm the one who's in charge now. Yeah, it's. I mean, yeah, and you've got that history there. It's very interesting. I, I also have the Rockets second. Not surprisingly, they had 65 wins last year, the most wins in the NBA. Their over-under win total this year is 54 and a half. So that's a huge, that's a massive drop-off. Uh, a little disrespect for the Rockets. I think people are sleeping on the Rockets. Their system is fantastic. They play really good defense. They shoot a shit ton of threes. They run. They get to the line. It can be sort of the opposite of the Warriors in terms of aesthetics because, like, unless you really like watching free throws, it's well, it sure. sometimes also, be boring. Like, but I think not they're really great. That much ball movement. They just pass right. it off to it. Either the, they're they isolating play a lot of or they yeah. pass it off to the wing, which so. suits Mello, but. It's not a different kind of ISO. Different kind of ISO, right? right? right yeah, right. there's a difference. So yeah, Melo um, will be fine. He will be helpful if it's off the bench when yeah. they need the mid range game. Because if you think about last year, if you think about two postseasons ago, it was very clear when they lost the Spurs in the playoffs that they needed some mid range help, and so you bring in Chris Paul, and then Chris Paul gets injured. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens with the Rockets after they unplugged a couple of those pieces, but I still think that they're two. I'm going to go first for three. Three is where we're going to start having some deviation, I have a feeling. Mm -hmm. I'm planting my flag. I know where this is you going. You know exactly where I'm I going because exactly Paolo and I going. have spent a lot of time out there. The third best team in the Western Conference this season, and I, and I toyed with them at number two. Wow. LeBron James and the Los Angeles no. Lakers. Incredible. I am all the way in on the Lakers, folks. The Kool Aid is flowing. One thousand percent in on the Lakers. They are deep. They they have some serious problems in terms of who they're going to play at the center position. You can't squeeze forty eight minutes out of Javale McGee every night, and then after that, they're like trying to run Kyle Kuzma out of there. And they think they have shooting. I would beg to differ. You How realize that you just picked them for the third best team, right? <laughs> I picked them for the third best team, and I'm outlining the, the hiccups. However. LeBron James is still LeBron. I checked. He's here. He's he's doing LeBron stuff. They have a lot of people and pieces that they can shuttle out that are interchangeable. They're very switchable. I think they're going to be good. You know the most important question about LeBron? Tell me. Is he disappointed by Drake? Did you not You're going to have to explain it to him. Uh, <laughs> are you was, washed? Wait, oh, wow. I am done. 1,000% washed. But are you talking about him dancing on so, stage? No, on, what are you talking about? On LeBron's show. On his show. Yeah. HBO show, The Shop. Right. I didn't watch a, the whole thing. There was a scene. I saw. Did the, you watch any of no, it? No, I saw. You're rolling your eyes at me. I saw the clip <laughs> when, uh, when Drake was dragging Kanye. Yes. That and part I saw. That, I saw said, that clip. Right. He said, we were talking about releasing a diss track mm -hmm. to Pusha T's diss track response. And he said that he didn't want to do it because basically the information he had was too mean, mm. which I'm like, okay. <laughs> and <laughs> okay. <laughs> and Your dismissive eye rolls in this he, segment are really he better suited LeBron for video. He said I didn't want to disappoint you. And LeBron was like, you never could. It was so sweet. And then he was on stage at his concert this weekend. Look, we'll take all the Drake, uh, LeBron, shop content we can get at, <laughs> at Heat Check. I just think basketball-wise, it's going to be a good team. You've been out there a lot. To, to your point, though, yes, I'm really— me. Okay, so there's two aspects to this. One is 
the Brandon Ingram factor, which is like how he develops and what kind of leap he takes. And kind what of, position they put him And what at. position they put Well, I mean, yes. With just how many different positions he can defend and how flexible he can be, that will key a lot of their success this season, mm-hmm. not just LeBron. But in terms of LeBron specifically, I'm really interested to see like what his motivation is. Because we've heard, I've heard both sides of the coin, if you will, where it's like, He's going to take like a year off, like slow just to get the young kids up to speed and like just kind of go about. I don't think he has that in his DNA. That's what I'm saying. And then the other side is like, how could you possibly say that about one of the most competitive people on the planet, one the best player in the sport? So that's what I think will be the difference between them being the third seed possibly or the sixth seed. Third seeds for you guys, because obviously not the Lakers, which makes whoever you have at three wrong, but we'll go with it. I know Paulo and I agree on this. We both picked the Thunder. You both picked the Thunder. Yeah, I have the Thunder in the playoffs. They're a little bit farther down on my list. Um, tell me why. Like, you're not concerned about Russ starting off no, I on think the that, mend? No. I think that Roberson's <laughs> like the injury, obviously, to yeah. be most worried about. But I think that what they have that benefits them this year they didn't have last year was a year of chemistry building yes. between Westbrook and Paul, and Paul. George. And that's going to help a lot. Also, you have Paul George defending as Love well. Love Paul George. If you're going to have anyone there to like kind of help make up for the best defender on your team who's injured, he's the guy you want. And also, I think that they have a lot of like X factors. No what? one's even thinking about Nerlens right. Noel. Ah, I, well, I think about Nerlens yeah, all the time. I love Nerlens. Dreams about I love Nerlens, and, I, and I, th- I continue to believe Rick Carlisle aside that Nerlens is talented. That oh, I do too. And what yeah. I like about Nerlens, and I've made this point a zillion times, but a zillion times in one, why not? Uh, he was sort of like a, a mini Joe Kim Noah, good Joe Kim Noah, not washed Joe Kim Noah starter kit in that offensively, he doesn't need the ball. He's just going to roll to the rim and he's fine. But he does a lot of other things. He rebounds, he runs the floor extremely well, and he's a way underrated passer and he can guard multiple positions. So I think he could be super useful for that team when you're spelling Steven Adams and you need another big to roll mm-hmm. in there and you're not going to fall off defensively. Where are you on Dennis Schroeder. Dennis Schroeder and Russ on the I, same team. I'm in. I'm, I don't know why. I, the whole Thunder at the three seed could come back to look really bad for us just given the injuries and, you know, the random players like Dennis Schroeder. But I think I think he needed a, a change of scenery. Mm. And he'll be a nice, I don't want to say foil to Russ because they both kind of have that same fiery kind of vibe about them. But I think he'll be really, like, a lot more helpful than people think. But I think it goes back to what Haley said, like, the chemistry between Russ and Paul George, specifically Paul George, I think he's going to have a big year. Like, I was toying around with the idea of maybe even, like, saying no, he could be a do dark it. MVP, do ca- dark, a dark horse MVP <laughs> candidate. Hello, I tried to save I, you. I, I said toying around with the idea. I'm not saying that that's a thing that's going to happen, but, like, if the odds are good, why not? I'm just saying, I think he's going to have a big year, and I think that's why I have the Thunder three. I don't think Schroeder's going to be an issue at all, and I'll tell you why. Because Russ is going to appreciate him because he has not had someone to back him up like that in such a long time. Does Russ want Russ people is, backing him up though? Like if it was up to him, he'd go 48. <laughs> yeah, but it's not up to him. It's right, up to no, his body know, just, and he knows he can't you know. do it. And so every and he, the only reason I, I think he stays in the game that long is because he's so competitive and he knows exactly what's going to happen right. when he comes out. And the reverse is true too. Schroeder knows he's not going to become the starting point guard on the Thunder. Yeah, he, he knows, knows his that role. in his mind. Yeah, he's not delusional. Exactly. And so he knows he's going to be a backup. Yeah. I would like to and see on those. a winning team. I just want to see those guys interact as the season goes along. Where are we now? Four? Are we at four? Four. We're at four. All right. Uh, go ahead for four. Who do you have for four? I have the Jazz because I I wanted to put them lower, if I'm being honest with you, because I think they're going to regress a little bit. I do bit. want you to be honest with me. Why uh, always, did you? Always. Why did you decide not to put them lower? They're just such a good defensive team. There's going to be so good defensively with Rudy Gobert. Like, provided he does, he stays healthy, I think you're going to be so good defensively that it's going to make up for any kind of setback that somebody like Donovan Mitchell has. He's going to lead the team now for sure. Like, I know that at the start of last season, it was very much like, okay, so is this Donovan Mitchell's team now? And it took a while for it to become that. Now it's his team. And defenses are going to go out to stop him. That's going to change things, I think. But I think that how good they are defensively is going to make up for that. I also have the Jazz for. And Haley's doing a shocked face to Me both too. of us. Wow. Oh, you have them too? Yeah. Oh, I thought Shouts you were making fun. Uh, okay, that's great. This is, so for the same reasons that Paolo just outlined, look, they were a surprising team last year, but after Gobert came back, because there was that period there at the beginning of the season where they like were not playing well at all. And then Gobert came back for the second time, and they just got super hot. The defense was fantastic. Donovan Mitchell... 
Calm Don, love him here at Heat Shack. Uh, he just like he took off. Now he wasn't Rookie of the Year. The Rookie of the Year resides in Philadelphia, as we all know. But he was very, very close and super talented. Sky's the limit for that kid. I love this team. Plus, they got my guy Ricky Rubio. I call him Rick. Rick Rubio. I mean, still out there looking very handsome and Always. ready to play basketball. I love this team. Like I think sometimes we forget about the Jazz because they play in Utah. And everything about this team I'm there for, I'm going, they're going to be really high on my league pass watching. I think it's crazy we all picked them because I thought that that was... That was going to be the device phone? But no. then again, Venus is in retrograde. So. <laughs> um, that's what's going do on. Do five. I have the Lakers at five. I also have the Lakers at five. What? Yeah. Okay. We I think that's a sweet spot for them. We... I know. It's just like, it, words are so in sync, I guess. Uh, we already talked about that's the sweet. Lakers, so I'll give you my five, the Thunder. I have them below the Jazz just because the Jazz are healthy and ready to rock. I have them below the Lakers because uh, I checked the rosters. They don't have LeBron. So I think that I think that the Thunder are going to be good. I do. Uh, but let's see what Russ looks like when he gets back. I can't believe you have the Thunder under the Jazz. They, I mean, they were right there in lockstep last season, right? I mean, they they finished with the exact same record. That's and they the played each thing. other in the playoffs. And I think that they're pretty yeah. much like very close to the each other. The other thing about these teams is that I think we're going to get the same thing we had last season where like a three bunch. through 11, yeah. that 10 are all bunched up. Yes. Okay, let's go to number six where we'll get some new teams. Haley? I have Denver there. You have Denver wow. at six. I know. Wow. I know. Get, make the case for Denver because I don't think this, this is wild. The Nuggets almost made the Thank playoffs uh, last season. They, they've they been sort of sniffing around the Western Conference playoff picture for a while. Jokic looks like he's ready to take that next step. What do you like about them? And Jamal Murray and Jamal Gary Murray. Harris are only going to get better. Gary Harris, and, Will Barton, way slept on. And Paul Millsap is healthy this year. This is the case for the Nuggets. And it is game 82 when they lost to the Wolves. Mm-hmm. Both of those teams right now have not changed, right? Now, Butler might get traded very soon, and they could change a lot. But the Nuggets have gone up significantly in expectations, and the Wolves have gone down. And I think it's because we all know that the young Nuggets are only going to get better. Mm -hmm. Jokic looks amazing. And Paul Millsap's healthy. Right. That's the thing. That's the only thing that I would say, like, has changed, right? And they in have that a sense, bench. Like, they're hypothetically going to get a healthy Paul Millsap, which should help. In theory, yes. Uh, he's also getting up there in age. He had a really bad season yeah. last year when he was on the court. I like Paul Millsap in theory. Uh, I just wonder how much of Paul Millsap is left. I like the Nuggets. I have them a little bit lower. Real quick about the Nuggets. You did a Michael Porter story. <sighs> yeah. And I just wanted to, one, you should go read the Michael Porter story because it's good. Uh, it's a quick Q&A with Michael Porter. Two, my favorite part of the Michael Porter story, and I texted Paolo about this, <laughs> was Paolo goes, hey, uh, not to spoil the story, but he goes, hey, what do you like about Denver and Michael Porter's answer was the weather and then it snowed this weekend <laughs> yep. and I'm like Michael Porter yep. are you aware of geography or where you are like it's nice there it's very nice there I love Denver it is not snowing for roughly four days a year right. okay that's like saying the weather is the same as like well is he cute um He's nice. He's got a nice personality. Yeah, he's got a nice yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, wow, Michael Porter Jr. hates Denver. You heard it here first. <laughs> wow, what a Breaking take. news on the Heat Check podcast. Who do you have at six? I have the New Orleans Pelicans. Wow, okay. So we, we mixed it up a little yes, bit here. I trust Anthony Davis, and I think that's what it comes down to with this. Also, actually, no. You know what? I trust Anthony Davis, and I trust Drew Holiday. He's under the radar a little bit still, but it's valuable. I think they're just going to be good. I, I They're going to run a lot. They're going to use AD as more of a... Yeah, that's kind of a stretch big as opposed to for the first half of last season where they had to use uh, him and Boogie together and kind of work with that kind of lineup. Uh, I think Miritich is perfect to pair alongside Davis and I think Julius Randle as the other big in the rotation like gives him a great depth. Um, the one thing I'm worried about is Alfred Payton coming in for Rondo. I think yeah. Rondo was super valuable for them. But as a whole, I think they're, they're just going to take another step forward as will AD and his kind of his leap will key you know, their their success. And that's why I have them there. I like the Pelicans. I have them in the playoffs. I have them lower. The reason why I have them lower is because I think three of their best guys, I just don't understand how you play them on the court. Sure. At the same time, like there's going to be really crucial moments and you're going to look around and go, okay, well, AD obviously isn't coming out of the game. Now, how do you play Julius Randle and Miritich with him? Like, how does that work? I don't understand a scenario where you're going to have those three guys on the floor. And if you do, what does that mean for spacing? Like, I don't know. It just seems so like think, a big jumble. Because uh -huh. Miritich can shoot. Yeah. Julius Randle 
He's a great passer and rebounder, and he can bring the ball up and super energy. And I love a lot of things about his game. I just don't know about that fit. So I have them a little bit lower. I have at number six, mm. as fans of the Heat Check podcast can probably predict, oh, I know the this. Portland Trailblazers at number six. <laughs> Frankly, I feel bad about having them six. They finished third last year. They were one of the surprises of the Western Conference and the NBA writ large. They won 49 games last year. Nothing's really changed in Portland. I still think they're going to be good. I just have them uh, slightly lower than that Jazz Thunder. And you know what? It, like Jazz Thunder Blazers, throw them in a hat, pick one out. Yep. I'm cool with it. I'm ready for the Zach Collins era. They are too, apparently. They're very high on Zach Collins. We'll see what they get out of him. At seven, I've got the Nuggets. We already talked about the Nuggets. I have the Blazers there. You have the Blazers. I have the Blazers. You have the Blazers. All right, and at eight, what do we have? That's why I have the Pelicans. You have the Pelicans at eight. I have the Pelicans at eight. I have your Los Angeles Clippers. You've got yeah. the Clippers in the playoffs. Yeah. yeah. I feel like you're pandering to Isaac to mix it up a little bit. so that you can come back on the program. Yep. Wanted to mix it up a little bit. Pile's I think the Clippers are So deep. wait, who do you have missing out of that group have, then? You have the Nuggets on the outside? The Nuggets, the on, nuggets the on the outside again. Yep. Yeah. Yet I, just, again. I don't know why I don't. There's something about the team that I can't fully buy into. And I know that's like goes against the, the hipster NBA culture of not buying into Nikola Jokic. Okay. But uh I, I Wait, just you think, don't buy into him specifically? You don't buy into No, no, no. I think he's great. I, is he a little overrated in my mind? Maybe. You know, if he doesn't take another leap this year. He in, doesn't or start Jamal to Murray. Defense. Yeah, exactly. Defense is the thing that I'm more worried sure. about. Um, so I, I think the Clippers are just like good. They're a professional They're team. <laughs> like, They're a professional team. What, they, have a, uh, they have quite a bit of depth. They obviously like SGA. He's going to be an interesting right. addition for them. I love Lou Will. And Avery Bradley should be able to play some defense. Tobias Patrick Harris, Beverly's I think. Back. I look at this team and I go... They have a lot of pieces that can be useful pieces that would provide depth, right? They would have and the have, deepest bench in the NBA if yeah, they only had if they only a had starting lineup. Right. Yeah. The, if they only had a star, right. right. Is Tobias Harris your best player? Oh, can, Tobias can he, Harris. But can he, he, he be your best player? Absolutely not. I think, I think absolutely he, he, not. No, he cannot this be a, your best player. I think player. this is the right take. He No, he can't be your best player. Is, I mean. But he doesn't need to be in this context is what I'm saying. Well, who is then? No, no, no. You don't need to have a best player. You don't player. need to have you, a best player. You, you can be the Hawks, and like the 2015 sure. Hawks, and win the eight, and get the eighth seed with this team. You have Doc Rivers, who's a pretty good coach last time I heard. And I don't know. I just think they're deep. They're, they're not going to try to do too much. They're not going to try to be something they're not. They're and deep, I think that's but good enough in the West to get the eighth seed. They're deep, but they have nothing at the top. Look, I, I think the Clippers are going to be that like scrappy, yeah. you know, Indiana West team yep. only without Oladipo, right? Like exactly what the we Clippers said. The Clippers are a team you take the over on, but you don't put them in the playoffs. Sorry, Isaac. Wow. Tough, tough call. Tough way to start. Uh, make sure to read these two. On the ringer.com, you did a Josh Hart piece, Paolo Ugetti, yeah. that was very fun and interesting and you were working on for a very long time. And Haley O'Shaughnessy, on the road, <laughs> to do a Hassan Whiteside story. I mean, like really out here, like covering the NBA. Exciting. I definitely pitched it not to go to Miami. You know, right. that is not what I had in mind. <laughs> they want to be Nobody on the beach. They want to get a tan. It was awful. You know what I really do like? <laughs> Denver, because the weather. <laughs> Den- Denver, because of the weather. It brings it full circle. That was an excellent callback. Make sure to read these two on theringer.com. They'll also be a big part of NBA Palooza on Tuesday. Paolo and Haley, thank you. Thank you to Paolo and Haley. Always love talking to them about Drake and random stuff. Uh, And now we're going to bring in Kevin Clark for the first time ever on the Heat Check podcast. Riley McAtee and Isaac will join as well. All right, joining me in the studio right now, staff writer, Kevin Clark, associate editor, Riley McAtee. Kevin, I don't think you've never been on Heat Check before, right? I've been on a number of NBA pods. I don't know which. But not this I, specific I don't know, one. I don't know under which umbrella they fall. You and I have done things together before, but I don't think we've ever talked basketball together. And Riley and I have talked basketball, and Isaac and I have talked basketball. But I didn't tell you guys why you're all here together right now. What we did at the beginning of the podcast was we previewed the Western Conference and Eastern Conference playoff picture. Mm. And then I started thinking about the teams that probably aren't going to make the playoffs. And then I started thinking about the representatives here at the Ringer who uh, are avatars for teams that are, let's say, not so good. Sure. Generally, fandom— that, I've, I've been trotted out quite a bit in this role. But just just generally fandom that is difficult. Mm. Uh, you, Riley, yeah. you are a Kings fan. Yep. And Kevin, you are a Magic fan. I am. And Isaac Lee— yeah. is a long-suffering Clippers fan. Uh-huh. Now, we just had, uh, Paolo just said, made the case for them making the playoffs, but I'm talking about this more from like an existential overarching position, like what it's like to be fans of these teams. So we're going to play a little game called NBA Sad Face. 
And I'm going to ask you guys questions and then determine at the end which of you has the biggest NBA sad face. Oh, wow. That's why you're here. It's going to be him. It's exciting, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. All right. So here we go. So we'll start it off. Kevin, we'll start with you. Yeah. When is the last time you felt joy? <laughs> For, okay. So this is a loaded <laughs> question um, about <laughs> basketball or life. I mean, really take it however you want <laughs> no, it, but, but try I, to sprinkle we're, a little basketball. We're, we're, we're going to separate this. I'm, I'm a fairly, I'm an extremely happy person with many joys in my yes. life. From a basketball perspective, mm-hmm. great question. So I, I would say the last time I was just out of my shoes, happy about basketball, was when we went to Los Angeles after the Dwight trade and beat the Lakers, which was 2012, something like that. Sure. I'm bad with and, yeah, history. We, we, we just out of nowhere put together a nice shooting performance and we beat the Lakers. And that was really maybe the last time I was just like fired up. Actually, the other time... It was a game I was at. It was another Rockets game with Dwight because it was really the only games we got up for for mm-hmm. a couple of years. And Dwight, I think, fell down in the final possession sure. of the game. Yeah, that happens. Alfred Payton stole yeah. the ball from when we won the game. So I think those were the two games where I was just like, holy crap, it's great to be a Magic fan. We had the big run. <laughs> we had the big run last November yes. where we were the best. We b- briefly became the Golden State Warriors for three weeks and Eric <laughs> yeah. Gordon was just draining threes. That's right. I forgot about that. You guys but, were like actually making shots. We were the best yeah. shooting team in the league. And, yeah. I, and, and oddly enough, I was looking at the preseason stats and we were 27th in three-point shooting behind uh, the Shanghai Sharks. Oh, okay. To NBA.com. So that's that's not as good. They don't not play in the good. NBA, not as it as turns good. out. No, I, I recommend, by the way, the the advanced stats page on NBA.com. It's fun. Because it has all of the random international teams that have played, so you can see just where they where, fall yeah, in that Maccabi Haifa from Israel, yeah. ahead of the Magic and Shooting. Love the Maccabi Haifa. Uh, Riley, same question to you as a Kings fan. When was the last time you felt joy? Mine's a little more recent. It was back when they did the most recent NBA draft lottery, and Mm -hmm. we moved up to number two. And And for a brief moment, you thought Luka Doncic was coming here. I thought Doncic was coming, or or Eaton at the time. I mean, we, in our like initial mock draft, put Doncic at one. And so it was like, all right, it didn't matter, though. I felt like we were going to get a generational prospect to finally put the pieces together. Either way. It was going to be it. And So ping pong balls. Ping pong balls was the last time you felt happy. Yeah, I mean, well, when you put it that way. I, I thought it was going to be a little more dramatic and exciting <laughs> than ping pong balls. And How do you feel about Bagley right now? You know, I want to give him a chance. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not super high on him in terms of his skill set and everything. You know, it, it's frustrating that the guys in our front office, guys like Vlade Divac and Peja, mm-hmm. had so much success with a style of basketball that used passing and movement and cutting. And yeah. They're like, Vladi was an amazing passer. Vladi was an amazing passer. Weber was an amazing passer. I mean, they had bigs who could move the basketball. Yeah. And instead, now they're like, oh, what about if we draft this guy who, it, well, you know, ball works, goes in, works ball in the post, out. Yeah. like bangs around. You know, it's... I will say because I have sometimes periodically a very sad life where I'm watching too much preseason basketball. I've seen mm-hmm. quite a few preseason uh, Kings games and De'Aaron Fox has looked pretty good. I like to hear in Fox. I think, you know, maybe all of a sudden he takes a step. Well, uh, keep yeah. your fingers crossed for him. Isaac Lee, same question to you. And Ooh. you, and I will say, <sighs> Isaac took umbrage with even being, I told him what this segment was going to be. He was the only one who, who uh, had prior knowledge. And he took umbrage with being included. I mean, I can't, <laughs> I don't understand. Like, I would like to note, first of all, that Kevin and Riley both are speaking in a very morose right. kind of down tone. I'm very happy with the Clippers. Yeah. Um, They've been over 500 since 2011. There are like children who can walk and talk and form coherent thoughts who have never seen a losing Clipper season. They have like a completely new organizational infrastructure. They're not the joke of the league Clippers of the past. Like, I don't know why I'm, inc- I'm included well, okay. in this. Let, let me take a step back, guys. Like, this is such let a- me take a step back. I, I would I, kill to have the last like 10 years I, of Clippers basketball. I would say that it's odd that I'm included <laughs> because in my lifetime, the Magic made the finals twice. We have had that experience. We've won a finals game. Mm -hmm. Very few teams have done that in the context of of the NBA. Um, Not only two finals, but one finals. We've had generational talents, what, once a decade? I mean, if you can click... Uh, Shaq and Dwight, yeah. Well, also, I would say Trace McGrady and Penny. Penny, Uh, yeah. I mean, Grant Hill was was completely derailed. Uh, Now Mo Bamba. Yeah, Yeah, Mo Bamba. Big Mo Mo Bamba Bamba fan. No, and, and so I just think generally... The Magic have had it better than a lot of people maybe think because of the 
because for some reason, whenever they get bad, they get extremely bad. I understand that. But I would say that as far as my rooting interest, I've had a much better run than Isaac and Riley. I like that. You, you heard it. I win. I like you guys fighting on this one. I really like Isaac uh, getting his backup, which is not at all a Clippers fandom thing to do. I mean, the Clippers having a <laughs> chip on their shoulder. Defensive. I don't believe it. <laughs> uh, incredibly defensive. Isaac, when was the last time you felt joy? I would say before the Blake trade. I actually had hope for that season. I really thought they were going to be good. I had just actually started working here at the Ringer and then Blake got traded. So that's probably the last time I felt joy. It was all downhill after that one. All right. uh, I'll start with Isaac this time. When you think of the Clippers, you think of... Disappointment. See? Um, See? (laughs) See, you're grandfathered in on this one. I am grandfathered in on this one. Um, I started really following basketball and the Clippers during that Elton Brand, Chris Kamen era. Ooh. Obviously, Sam Cassell was in that as well. But like, they won some games, so that's when I got in. And then there was a dip of like two years of mediocrity to being very, very bad. And Blake came into my life, and then <laughs> he immediately gets hurt and doesn't play for an entire year. So that's there's a disappointment there. And then you know we see the Lakers trade for Chris Paul disappointment there because we don't want the Lakers getting another star and then we get Chris Paul and then what happens is four straight years of disappointing playoff losses like getting swept by the Spurs in the in the second round in that first year and uh, disappointment has basically shaped the Clippers like we get hope for a little bit and then we get disappointed that feels right to me. I would have said it uh, when I think of the Clippers, I think of the Lakers because that's the only team in LA but that's good enough. Disappointment's good. Riley, what about for Sacramento? The first thing I think of, I yeah. think it's home and like my childhood. I know that that's a really lame, oh, sappy answer for this pod. What is this, Lady Bird? They, well, it's Sacramento is a one team town, <laughs> and I never picked up the the Raiders and the Niners or any of the San Francisco Bay Area teams. So really, all I this had is your when team. I was like eight. What were the Kings? And and it'll always be that way. This is the only team I rooted for when I was a kid. He's a Sacramento exceptional. Good for so him. This is it. This is you it. Know, it I doesn't like, matter how much they disappoint me. This is I it. was going to make fun team. of you, but I like how hard you ride for your hometown. I think of Vladi sitting in front of that whiteboard, which is fucking amazing. Yeah, I try uh, to not think about What that. do you think about the Magic? It's a great question. I, mean, I probably default to, it's strange to me because I was, I went to all the Shaq and Petty games, but mm-hmm. I was very young. And so you don't remember large swaths. You remember the great moments. I actually identify most with the 2009 How young era. were you? How young are you now? So f- when Shaq was drafted, I was five. Okay. I, I, I'm not going to do the math in my head because it'll probably make my head explode. But, sure. Right. And so I, I was pretty young. Sure. Th- I mean, I went to Do you the remember finals. those games? Sure. I went to the finals. Um, I remember, I certainly remember those games. Yeah. The 95 one. I remember, you know, Nick Anderson stealing the ball from Michael Jordan, claiming GOAT status for Michael Jordan yeah, by yeah. stealing the ball from him. But it wasn't like I remember everything. So the 2009 finals was in my college wheelhouse. It was all, you know, it was it was friends, it was all that stuff. So when I think of the Magic, I think of that. If you had to pick a lineup, it would be that sort of, you know, even though Jameer didn't start in the finals, it would be Jameer, Dwight, Hito Turkoglu, Richard Lewis. Those are the guys I think of when I think of the Magic. I also think of uh, a whiteboard when I think of the Magic. Like the double whiteboard yeah. disaster, really amazing. Yeah. Like it's bad enough for Hennigan to have done it. But who, then for Vladi to like repeat the mistake, like who's taking that picture yeah. and who how do they the have worst, a job? Who had the worst whiteboard? I think it was the Magic because they actually put prospects on the yeah. board before they had to go after those guys. Well, it didn't matter because everyone knew they were going to get fired. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. Another question for you guys. I want you, I'm going to give you something to respond to. Okay. Respond to the magic tweeting out last year. Congratulations, <sighs> yeah. Shelvin Mack, 3.9 assists per game as their <laughs> assist leader. Very excited about it. Put it on social media to say so. Well, I actually reacted to it in real time by putting the Jim Halpert staring at the camera <laughs> face. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was, That's about that right. Was, that was about right. I mean, I just don't know what you can do. I mean, it's a tough position the social people are put in. I, mm-hmm. I don't I don't know those guys. I used to know the, one of the guys who did it, but the guys who do it now, I don't know what you do to celebrate the magic. And the, and the tone of the internet is so celebratory for everything that I feel like sometimes the NBA team is just like, whatever, we'll just celebrate Shelvin Mack. And then NBA Twitter is like, no, we're not going to do this. Yeah. NBA but, Twitter is pretty soft on almost everything. Well, yes, uh, yes. They, they can also be a little... A little crazy. Depends on what fan base you're talking about. Respond to Matt James's slack. He put it in slack recently in the NBA, uh, and you took umbrage with it, so you could just 
Yeah. Do the reprisal here during the preseason. The Jazz just broke 100 on the Kings. It's still the third quarter. The Kings are shooting 33% from the field and 15% from deep. What? Dragging the Kings in the preseason. Whatever. It's preseason. I, I, I don't <laughs> care. Call me when they're losing to the Jazz by 30 in the regular season, which will almost definitely Very happen. Yeah. And then Very I'll just be like, so like, go. So like Wednesday, right? I would right? not open up that invitation. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, ha- it'll happen in the regular season, but I, whatever. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> from, what I, I have a, from what I understand, both Dave Yeager and De'Aaron Fox got like violently ill after that game, and then they missed the next preseason game. Sounds so like they got violently ill. I think, the, I think the hotel Flugin. workers in Utah like to you know make sure they give their team. Wait, <laughs> the, Jazz, the, room the, the Jazz and the Kings are actually playing on Wednesday, so we're gonna call them on Wednesday. Oh, then. great revenge game! This is perfect. <laughs> I I want to say something. I googled King schedule and I got the LA Kings. I have a similar thing, but it's not that. It's that when I do magic SCH, I assume it's going to autocorrect to magic schedule. So I just do and press enter magic school bus every single time. Magic school bus. Because no one ever Googles magic schedule. I can't even tell you how many times I've Googled Kings and then immediately had to Google Sacramento Kings. And somehow Google, the company that knows everything, has not figured out that I'm from Sacramento and I'm a Sacramento Kings fan and do not care at all about hockey or the LA Kings in any way. Yeah, no, the... uh, the San Francisco Giants are the default giant schedule, which I always found strange. Yeah, that's a weird one. I don't have these issues, but I, I like hearing about yours. Um, <laughs> Isaac, here's one that I want you to respond to. The boss man, Bill Simmons, uh-huh. tweeted this out. Jimmy Butler says he only cares about winning, and yet he originally requested a trade to the Clippers, Knicks or Nets. This whole thing is hilarious. The obvious implication being the Clippers don't win. I mean, factually... The boss man is not incorrect. However, I would like to say that the grouping of the Knicks and Nets probably brings the average winningness of it down. I will say if Jimmy Butler does go to the Clippers, that's a winning team. That's at least a playoff team. I would take the rest of the Clippers roster than the rest of the Minnesota roster. We just talked about this. They have a deeper roster than basically any team in the league. Granted, Kevin Clark is in here literally shaking lineup. his head at you. Oh, no, it's not about that. Oh, it's not that? <laughs> I, well, it could have been about that. I think you're right, Isaac, that uh, if they got Jimmy, he'd immediately be the best player on the team, and then they have a pretty deep team. Uh, but I just I just thought it was great that Bill threw the Clippers in with the Knicks and Nets. It was just, it was perfect for I, our purposes. I mean, Jimmy did. He grouped them together as the teams he wanted to go to. He obviously wanted to go to Big City. That was his leverage. Um, this is the NFL I, saying they're going to move a team to Los Angeles for every team that didn't build like a new stadium and whatever. Kevin Clark, why are you shaking your head? I, shaking I'm your looking head at Josh Robbins' Twitter feed. He's the magic beat writer oh. now, now for the Athletic, and I'm just I just wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything the last couple of days. Yeah, you got to get out, it's the exact same as it's been for the past five years. <laughs> no one's hitting shots, so the answer is I didn't miss anything. And I was just looking at it, and I was just getting low grade PTSD. That's uh, from a shot chart. That's perfect. Um, give me one reason. While you're optimistic for your team this year. Okay, so I actually have a ready-made answer for this. And it's that there are prospects. For the first time, there are prospects that I think they, you, we can build around. And those prospects are Mo Bamba and Jonathan Isaac. Aaron Gordon is, is what he is. He's not going to be the best team on a finals team. That's never going to happen. Um, are those two guys? I don't know. But I do know that if those guys can develop the way we think they can, that they can be a playoff team in, I don't know, three years. And then, you know, we our cap space is not going to be terrible in a couple of years. I just saw a write-up. I think it was uh, Danny LaRue wrote about it. You know, they can be the one team to offer Terry Rozier money if they want. <laughs> I, I don't know. And then in 2020... <laughs> What? No, no, the, like the, getting cap excited about the cap space for terrible. Terry Rozier is just perfect magic. I mean, they do it's need to. It's not p- perfect, man. We don't do that shit. We just draft a terrible player who can't shoot. I like Terry Rozier just fine. I think it's going to be good. I, I'm crossing my fingers for you. Riley, same question. One reason why you're optimistic Harry Giles. I'm such a believer oh, in him. Yeah. Uh, he, can, he can pass. He's shown off his passing in preseason. Their big man great. situation's muddled, though. The big man situation is muddled, but that's that's the thing. I think that he's going to rise up and show that you he's do. the real deal. Yeah. Are you more optimistic about him or Bagley? Oh, Giles. It's not really? even close. I think Giles is going to be the rookie of the year. Like, just watching him. Wow. He's so smooth. He, he's so good. I really, really like him. I mean, he's looked good in the preseason. My, my problem, though, is when you think about rookies of the year in terms of candidates, right? Like generally they're going to put out outsized numbers. I think ayton has got a bigger, an easier path to outsized yeah. numbers or they control the narrative. And I think Donkic has a better chance to control the narrative. Giles on top of that 
he's got to get the minutes, and those rotations are going to be squirrely, I think. I mean, I think Giles would have the narrative just because he's coming back from so many injuries. Mm. It's true about the minutes. He might not get the minutes, but that's fine. Maybe he doesn't win Rookie of the Year. I think he'll be really good. I'm I'm hopeful for you. I would like you to have nice things. Isaac Lee, give us a reason why you're optimistic. Cap space. We have cap space this summer for two max slots. A lot of cap flexibility. We did not have that basically since the Chris Paul trade. I know people are going to be like, why don't you just say Shea Gilgis Alexander, your seemingly prodigious rookie? I don't really like him. I didn't like him what? in the draft. I watched him during preseason. I still have a lot of questions about him. What don't you like about him? Ah, he still can't really shoot. He can only really drive right. He's also 180 pounds at 6'6". I would like for him to bulk up a little, but that's all rookies. I just think more important than the development of the young guys, we could get a star or two this summer. We have the space. We are in Los Angeles. I'm saying the Royal We. Jimmy Butler saying he wants to go to the Clippers is probably I also a, said he wanted to go sign. to the Knicks and Nets. He did this, say those this things. This is true. But it's a good sign that like a star is showing interest. Kawhi Leonard has been linked to the Clippers. Jerry West is in some kind of advisory role for the Clippers. Like Last time I checked, the teams that he manages do really well. I'm really excited for the offseason more than this season. And as a classic <laughs> Generation Z member, just <laughs> likes the thought of he the, doesn't like the games. The thought of things <laughs> likes well, transactions. I will say though, like during that process period where the Sixers were rebooting, the seasons were inverted, right? Like the yeah. ba- watching basketball was fine if you really like fucking Tony Roten and Alexi Sved. However, the off season when they were moving picks and clearing cap space and like, you know making trades and like summer league shit like that was exciting and now obviously it's back to being normal but i understand that appeal i understand the appeal of like the ancillary attendant adjacent concerns yeah. those are fun all right last one for you I, I want to create a little competition here tell me why the kings will be better than the clippers uh, oh my god do you want to reiterate your uh your ludicrous take Tell me why I the thought, Kings will be better I than the Clippers. I rethought that take. I don't know if they're really going to be better than the Clippers, but I think we have guys in uh, Giles and Fox and Buddy Heald and Bogdan Bogdanovich who all have like large variants going mm-hmm. into this season. They could get a lot better than they were last season and you know potentially take the leap, as everybody says. And so that kind of gives us more like unknown going into the season in terms of we could just get a lot better very suddenly. Not that we're going to be a playoff team or something, but I don't know if the Clippers necessarily have guys who are suddenly could just become really good. And so I think that there's a chance that like, it's like if the stars all align, maybe the Kings will be like an okay team. I love, I love seeing other franchises through your eyes. Yeah. Uh, through, through just like blind optimism, tunnel uh, vision. It's fantastic. Isaac, tell me why the Clippers will be better than the magic. I mean, they will be. That's like no question. <laughs> I, I, I can't. Un- I don't understand why this is even a question. Like, <laughs> he's so, this so is- angry that he's on this. Um, <laughs> they went forty-two and forty last year. <laughs> the Magic won like what twenty-five games or something. Like, I don't understand why this is even a conversation I'm at this sorry. point. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Look at him. Zach Lowe wrote the other day that there's a universe in which the Magic win thirty-five games, <laughs> which okay. tells and all you need <laughs> is a, all you need is a couple bad breaks for the Clippers. Oh my gosh. Hair on fire for the Magic. Tell me why the Magic will be better than the Kings. I mean, that's not. We just reversed roles. Now I'm Isaac and he's me. <laughs> like I don't even know why this is a question. We have Mo Bamba. We have Jonathan, a, rookie. a healthy Jonathan Isaac. Sure. We have for the first time, a guy who's going to run plays, which we haven't done for six years, which is a really exciting upgrade. Mm-hmm. Run plays will get shooters open. Do maybe, stuff. Maybe That's run, important. Maybe run some defensive schemes. Okay. We've been just going for it. I lost in there how you're going to be better than the Kings, but it sounds, it sounds no, promising. It's a, it's a huge upgrade because we do things now. You do we things. We didn't do things in You're going to do things. Years. And that concludes NBA Sad Face. What I found out in doing this little experiment is that... Uh, you guys have such contempt for each other, and I love it. I like like why are any of you? Not, no, to be well, clear, that's not a basketball thing. That's just a personal, just a just like yeah. a natural default position for you. Yeah. I'm declaring all of you guys winners or losers, depending on your perspective <laughs> of NBA Sad Face. You've been lumped together, uh, and I think it's wonderful. We brought you guys together. I want to thank Kevin Clark and Riley McAtee for joining us. I also want to thank Paolo Ugetti and Haley O'Shaughnessy for being on earlier, as well as Jason Concepcion. I want to remind all of you guys that NBA Palooza is on Tuesday. We've got all kinds of stuff all day long. You don't want to miss it. Uh, NBA Show is back weekly now. 
Please remember to rate and review us on Apple. We've got Heat Check every Monday. The Mismatch, sources say, on alternate Wednesdays. We've got group chat on Thursdays and uh, still TBD Friday show. That's it for us, gang. Heat Check will be back next Monday. Thanks for listening. <laughs>